Uh, today we'll be having the second session, and I'll be discussing about why, how AnyPoint Studio, uh, which is the MuleSoft ID for designing your Mule applications, then Data Sense Explorer, and uh, Data V, which is the language for uh, <coughs> MuleSoft expression language. So we have uh, Amit with us, Amit Singh, uh, Salesforce MVP. So who will be uh, guiding us through the session today? So Amit, uh, can we start? Yes, Sombesh. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. That's cool. Fine. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm glad you all are here. So here is the ag agenda for us that we are going to cover today. Uh, we will see what Data Sense Explorer is and what uh, what actually it is and how it is helping us whenever we are designing a Mule application in MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio. And then we will see how we can access event properties, event properties like URL parameters, what is the method, and what are the various parameters that we are getting from an event. And then we have uh, how we can create a variable in MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio. I'm sure uh, you might, uh, you all have created variables in Abyss classes or some other programming languages. But how we can create in MuleSoft Studio, we are going to cover that as well. And then we will be connecting with Salesforce, doing some queries on Salesforce object that might be contact, account, or any lead ob any object. And then we will also give, uh, we will also introduce you what data view is, how to create variables in data view, how to create functions in data view, and then we will talk about how to do the transformation from either JSON to XML or XML to JSON. Uh, that is a key thing. And then we will in the in the last. We are going to import the accounts to Salesforce. For importing, we have some XML or JSON file that we will be using. And then we have some core functions for data view, how those core functions are going to help us further. We are going to design application. So let's quickly start with Data Sense Explorer. So Data Sense Explorer is a tool and that is inbuilt inside our AnyPoint Studio, which gives us the ability to preview the whatever the input we are getting from the user and what will be the output for that particular element we have inside our AnyPoint Studio. That is, uh, this is the work for Data Sense Explorer. So if you wanted to access, you can see this is the icon for Data Sense Explorer and you can see what input we are going to get and what will be the output. So just to see this, uh, we have, uh, designed a very basic application into our first session that was like this. So suppose that if we wanted to see what input we are getting into our listener component. So we just need to select that component. As soon as you will select that component, you will see the properties of that element. And you can see here we have got input and inside input, whatever we will be getting will be a mule message. And mule message and these variables are exact, uh, these are, there inside mule event that we already discussed into our first uh, session. So inside mule message, we have payload, we have attributes, we also discussed that. So what kind of payload we are getting for uh, HTTP listener that is undefined. And why it is saying that undefined because we did not define what kind of input user is going to send us or what kind of input our API is going to accept that we have designed here. And again, if you get back and we select output here, we will see the same thing here and we will not be able to get the variables because we did not create it. Any variables here? I'm sorry, we have all, everything here. And then if you talk uh, about payload, it has been converted to any instead of define because we don't know what uh, payload is coming there that was undefined while we are receiving, but after receiving what output this node or what output this element is going to generate to us that is any here, any means it can be JSON, it can be XML text or any format. And if we see here into the attribute section, you can see that we have got now multiple things. Uh, we have listen, listener path, the path that we are listening here, this is the one. And then we have the complete request path, uh, relative path, we have version, script, what method we are, uh, that what is the method that is causing our URL to be hit and then we have uh, most thing that is URI parameters. We have, we have query parameters. We have request for headers, and we also have some certificates. If we are encoding our request, we are uh, providing some extra level of security for everything we have here. And this can be easily accessed via attributes that we are uh, via variables or attributes we are also going to discuss. So this is 
how quickly you can identify what kind of uh, attributes and what kind of variables your input is going to do now how we can define payload what now how we can define what kind of payload our listener or our input where our input is going to be taken by the system so for that if you select listener here you will see that there is a new link that is add met, uh, metadata so once you will click here you will see add metadata click on that you can see here what is the output we have variables uh, we have uh, attributes we have payload all three things that we were discussing here so what we need to do is we just need to click on edit and you can see that i have two user defines variable that we created here if you wanted to add additional variable you can just click here and you can give it a name suppose that you wanted to create some variables where you are going to store, uh, store contact information so once you will be creating here it is not defining what kind of uh, parameter we are getting but once you will create here after creating that attribute uh, it will take them some time to create because it will make the entries into the xml file behind the scene and where it will uh, make the entry we will see as well so once you will create here you can see that your new variable is here now you need to define what type of uh, attribute it is either it is a very simple you are going to access some csv file we have some excel file uh, flat files json or you have some object xml you just need to select suppose that you wanted to store json you need to select json from the schema we have uh, like from drop down you have two things one is schema one is example so what basically we do we create some example and we tell the system that this kind of data we are going to get that's what we did for con accounts and order so if you select for the example i have a file here into the src test and resource folders and we have got here that is a json file account json so as soon as i will select that i will see how many attributes or how many nodes i do have inside that json file and once i will select here now this data sense explorer is going to again re-evaluate and rerun what we have here inside our data sense explorer and then we are going to get the output of that tip. now you can see here uh, still we are so if you go to output here you can see into the output now we have got array of objects and uh, what parameters we have inside that array of objects is name phone industry whatever the attributes that you are going to create here so this is how you can define what input your uh, your api is going to accept and you will see what are the defined what you have defined now you might be thinking how to create that file to store inside the test resources so as you can see inside your project explorer you can see multiple folders are there just find your src test resources i don't create any file inside main resources because uh, this might cause some error while we are exporting our project so we mean need to make sure that whatever the files we are creating for the testing purpose or for the example purpose we need to make sure that we are creating inside test resource folder so you just need to right click on that go to click on new and then we have file provide the name of your file let's say that you have contact dot json so you just need to provide the name and the extension as well if you have some xml file uh, put the extension as xml here and once you will click finish it will create a blank file for you suppose that i do have here some simple json file for the accounts i will be using that as well so now we have got here you can see we have uh, account json inside resource folder we have contact and then we have one xml file as well that is for orders now if we are defining those into the test resource folder that means these files are not going to be deployed into the cloud observer and the, uh, where our mule application is going to run after we developed and deployed so how our system is going to identify after deploying like what are the types so what type of input our application is accepting accepting for that if you go to this folder that is src main resources if you expand this you will fi uh, find there is a file xml file that is application type you will see all your attributes here that you have defined whatever the attributes we have defined you will see here and you will also see what is the example here so for the testing purpose basically it is going to pick up from here and see this is the type of parameters uh, this is a type of input our application is accepting and even if you see that there is a folder called uh, examples here if you expand this 
you will see all your files here as well so whenever we are creating it is uh, making an entry here in this xml file as well and then also moving or copying those file into this example folder so this was uh, how you can quickly create uh, how we how you can work with data sets explorer now let's see what we have next so we wanted to access now we wanted to access mule properties mule event properties what properties is a very simple example suppose that whenever a user is making a request they are sending some information in the url itself instead of sending into the body like uh, we have first name we have last name or uh, if you take an example suppose that we are getting id of any record and then we wanted to get the information how we can access that so to access and store that we can either uh, directly access into any mule event like uh, we did uh, into the we have logger we have transform message and we have some other elements as well but as a best practice what we do we access those element store into the variable for creating a variable we have inbuilt element provided by mule soft that is set variable and then how to access is we know that uh, the first thing if we talk about here even if you see into the right side we have mule message to access the message we have a attribute called message and then what we wanted to access dot we wanted to access attributes so we have got attributes here and then we have uh, inside attributes we have n number of parameters so again we are going to use dot notation we have uri parameters we have query parameters so these are basically query parameters so instead of uri parameters we are going to use query parameters and then what the parameter name is so here you can see here the name is as first name we need to provide and the name of our parameter and we are using as what kind of value that we are getting from our parameter it is of string it is of integer of object that's what we are uh, here explicitly saying that this attribute value is returning us any string so how we can do that let's quickly see so what we will do is we will quickly create a variable here and inside the variable you can see even if you wanted to give the name uh, meaningful names so that uh, i'm saying here first name this is the display name once you will uh, go to into other input you will see the display name uh, display name will be changing here so and what is the name this is the name of our variable that we are going to create so what we need to do here is let's quickly say first name and how you are going to access you can see here we have got function or we can provide some our static value suppose that if you wanted to provide some static value you can provide like this or if you wanted to access the you are a query parameter that we said here so we have got function and then once you will hit control space you will see what all uh, parameters are available or we can say that what all functions are available to you so we have got message as soon as you will start typing message here you will see message put a dot notation you will see what we can access from message object we have payload and we have attributes so we are going to access attribute here again put a dot notation now we are going to access query parameters and inside query parameter we have a parameter name that is first name what is the type or what is the output we are going to say that as a string now we have got access variable you can see now the display name has been changed as first name and the name of our variable is f name how we can access this so again just to access let's quickly put a logger state uh, logger element here to log what output we are getting so i will say here f name as a display name the message again what we are going to do we are going to use functions to access the variables we have uh, something called where's dot whenever whatever the variables you have created you will get all the variables available here so now we have got this and again for the category i'm going to say f name now we have got a variable we are uh, uh, printing out that variable into the logger section so now let's quickly run this project and then we will test using postman and in the meanwhile we have next thing that we are going to see how we can connect with salesforce so for self connecting with salesforce or any other system that might be amazon services workday or some other erp system we have web services for everything mulesoft does provide connectors 
or uh, you might see some connectors available or if you don't see you might want uh, you might need to install from the Microsoft exchange that is uh, other form of uh, app exchange if you compare to salesforce in salesforce whenever we wanted to get some solution that are inbuilt or that are already available in the market we used to end up by searching into the uh, app exchange but if you talk about Millsoft, we have mule exchange where we get uh, every product that are available uh, product uh, basically or the apis the connectors that we can say in other words so in the meanwhile you can see that our application has been deployed if you go to postman into into the postman we have a local host caller 9090 forward slash hello this is uh, this was our endpoint and now we are going to pass a query parameter that is called as first name and then we are going to say here x let's quickly send this and see what output we are getting so we have got 200 we're not getting anything that was ex uh, expected output now let's get back to our studio we have got uh, one logger okay i think we need to see what the output is okay we have got one and two we have two with the same inputs what we are going to do is uh, i'm going to stop this or i'm just going to change the endpoint of our new application that we created so let's say we will i will say here day two just quick save it will do a hot deploy for us so we can also say that a quick deploy where uh, either we will be getting some errors or we will be getting the success output so if you go to console we have got that our application is ready now let's test it what we have so we need to say day two so we have got 200 here let's quickly check back uh, now we are here into our software studio so what i will see i will do this clear screen because uh, we hit uh, multiple times and now this time we have got here this is our logger because that is uh, the last logger that we have inside our application that is f name if we scroll down oh, sorry if we scroll to the right you can see here the logger that we have got output it is saying that f name the category of our logger and then we have got the name whatever name we are sending from our url parameters so this was a very quick example how you can access the attributes that was only for accessing the parameters url parameters you might want it to access uh, sorry these are the query parameters but if you wanted to access what method is you can also access the methods so you wanted to access uh, parameter you can see everything here we are able to get because of this this logger statement we are able to see everything what payload is uh, we are sending nothing into the payload what are the attributes we have request path or uh, request path everything you can get here and you can access with the help of dot notice and that we just saw now let's talk about how we can connect our mulesoft application with salesforce so we will be taking a very simple example uh, an example of querying salesforce contact records and displaying here as an output and then later on we will also see how we can send data to salesforce so for that we have this mule palette you can see all elements we will be getting here you just need to search here let's say that we are going to say salesforce query so search for salesforce query here as soon as you will search you will see multiple options here we are going to use salesforce query just drag and drop into the you know, palette that kind of palette that we do have you can see uh, we have got the first uh, flow name is main flow the second flow name is main flow one if you wanted to change the name you can just select this flow and then you can say here let's say that i'm going to say salesforce contacts and again let's discuss uh, there is one uh, more attribute that is called as initial state so if you wanted to stop this uh, uh, stop this uh, endpoint what you can do is you can quickly select as stopped or started so stopped means if you select stop this uh, whatever the uh, oh, so we can say that whatever the url for this api will be um, user will be hitting they will never be able to hit because we are stopping at initial state so we just need to select either started or blank uh, if we are selecting as a blank that means it is always started so now you can see we have got red sign that means our element is not happy we have to do something so we have got here 
we have got connector configuration we have nothing here so for the query or display name i'm going to say query contacts i am saying query contacts because uh, it will be meaningful like i'm querying contacts and why i'm putting inside uh, braces here or we can say that square brackets because we are going to get list of contacts from there and this square brackets is donating to the list of contacts now let's uh, create connector configuration again we will click on this plus sign it will ask us what authentication we wanted to use while authenticating with salesforce so we have basic username and password that we are going to use here and then if you see we have got uh, username password we have got oh, these all are deprecated and then we have this username and password jwt saml auth username and password auth 2.0 so we are going to select username and password we don't need to work on this proxy part uh, explore, uh, leave that as it is and then in the connection section we have got we need to provide a username here so let's say that uh, this is my username and then we have a password here if you wanted to show what you have, your password is, you can click on this button and this will show you your password. And then optional, we have security token. So security token is, uh, most of the cases it is required, but it is also optional. When it is optional, let's quickly get back to Salesforce environment. So we will be logging into Salesforce environment. I will say back to basic. So if you have added IP address, either network label or uh, your profile label, you no need to provide uh, your access token, but the IP address should be bypassing the need of access token. So if you are, uh, suppose that if you are in this network and then you have added your IP address at your profile, uh, there might be something that you have added at your profile label, or you have added your uh, IP addresses at network access level. So these are the two places if you have added, so you can see I have not added at network access label, but if we go to profiles, find my profile, which is system administrator. We go to there, we will be seeing that uh, I have got one IP range that is universal IP range, which means I can access my Salesforce account from any location all over the world. So that's why I don't need to provide access token here. And then we have an option for testing the connection. As soon as you will click here, it will verify your username and password. If you have entered correctly, it will give you success message. Like this, we are saying test connection successful. If you click on okay, again, once you will clicking on okay here, you can see here on the bottom right, we can see a message here saying that fetching metadata keys. So what it is fetching for us, it is fetching all the objects from the Salesforce in moment, whatever available by, might be standard or custom object. Now we have got one more, uh, one more text field we can say that is saying that salesforce query we need to put what query we wanted to or in which object we wanted to get the data so i'm going to say select id and then count id from contact if you wanted to put some limit here i'm going to put a limit of 10 records here so that it only return me 10 records i have got id and then i have got account id that is going to tell us either we have some contacts or not as soon as you will sell, uh, put a query here, again, it will refresh our metadata. That means Data Sense Explorer will work behind the scene and it will tell us payload will always, you will see undefined here, but at the output, you will see that you have got array of objects and then we have got account ID and ID, whatever the fields we have given for the particular object, which is contact. Now, if you click on anywhere in the canvas, you will see that uh, our red sign has been gone. That means now this element is ready to test for us. But there is one thing here because we did not define what is the URL for this, uh, for hitting this Salesforce query. We are again going to drag and drop a listener here into the source section. And then we will say here, uh, get contacts here, uh, why we are using get contacts, just to make it is a meaningful, that's it. And now we have got everything. Again, if you wanted to see the output, let's quickly see here, transform message. So we have got this output. Now uh, let's see one thing. Whatever the input we will be getting for, uh, for listener element, it will be output for our query contacts. In our case, we are not getting any input because it is a get request. And then whatever the output we will be getting from this query contacts element, that will be the input for transform message. 
that's why if you can see here we have got account id as an out uh, id in the input section and for output here we can say we wanted to see the json and what we wanted to see as we discussed that payload is everything for us whatever the input we are getting we will be getting here so we will see what preview means and how it does work but uh, as of now we don't have any data for preview so we have completed our flow just to connecting and getting the contact records from salesforce and uh, behind the scene it will initialize our application as soon as we will be saving so to save i'm using control s and uh, that is uh, everyone is familiar with now we have got here our application is ready to test if we get back here and then if we say we wanted to get the contacts let's see if uh, it returns us and we are good here you can see we have got uh, status as 200 that means it is okay and the result that we are getting is uh, array of contacts array of contacts we have got multiple objects so if you see here uh, we put a limit of 10 and then we might be getting either 10 records or more than 10 records so this is how quickly you can make a query here it this query is going to return one extra attribute that is type uh, which is going to hold the name of your object api object api name that is nothing so this is how you can connect with salesforce and you can do the query we will see next what we have so now we have transform methods so we were talking and we also used transform methods how transform messages works uh, we uh, we saw that we have just uh, input our uh, element we said that we wanted the output in json format and then uh, that uh, gives us the output in json so transform messages is a key thing for us why it is a key and key element because uh, whenever we are integrating to our more systems with each other then the way of communication or we can say that the language that they do accept that might be different uh, different suppose that salesforce is uh, can accept both xml and json uh, we have some other database system where we wanted to get uh, we are storing some orders record that is only accepting xml format so in that case what we need to do is if you are getting json as an input we need to convert into the xml or if you are getting xml as an input we need to convert into the json so to convert uh, or make uh, make sure that uh, we are transforming the data into the correct uh, input for the third system we need to use transform methods that we just saw we will be seeing here so this is a very this is a very simple here you can see we are getting payload that is array of an uh, array of objects that means so what we did here is we are using input as a json format and we wanted to get the output as a xml format so how we can do that so let's quickly see here now what we will do is we will create one more have one more flow here so let's quickly i will collapse this and this as well so we have got transform message let's quickly drag and drop here so once we will drag and drop here we will see transform message so i will give it a main, meaningful name so i will say transform information now you can see as an input we have nothing why we have nothing because uh, even we uh, there is no source which is giving the input to this transform message element and for the output you can see that this is a data view language uh, that uh, we are going to discuss as well and in the output section we have undefined metadata that means we don't know what input is going to uh, we are going to get we don't know what uh, the output that system is going to generate for us so let's quickly define a payload here just to uh, work with transform assets here so what we need to do is as uh, we did for uh, listener element we can also do for a transform message element or for any other elements that we have available here you just need to click on define as soon as you will see define you will see that this is screen you might seem so familiar to you uh, because uh, we already created a variable that was contact here we have got accounts and we have got orders so orders is in xml format contacts we have got in json and then we have accounts in json as well so we just need to select accounts here as soon as you will select accounts here you will see you have got your uh, structure of your json object here now if you click on here preview what it will do a preview it will show you what input you have and what is the output you are going to get so you can see here so let me quickly give it uh, a big room for us so that you all can see so here you can see now we are able to see that the output is 
we selected as a json of java and we are getting is that uh, it is going to return us linked hash map in that map that mean that means there will be a key and against that key we will be getting some output now if you wanted to change it to suppose that you wanted to change it to json you can see here we are getting object why we are getting object and object because into our uh, uh, into our output payload system we are saying that we have only two curly braces which, uh, which donates nothing in json it donates as an object here so before we go ahead let's discuss uh, line number one two three so line number one is telling us what did, uh, data view version we are going to use ampersand dw is data view and 2.0 is the current version that is supported by latest mule software softwares and that is 2.0 if you are using mule 3.0 that means uh, you will be ending using data view 1.0 and then what output we wanted to generate from this transform system to the other system uh, that is uh, we can select output and then we need to provide either application by json xml csv data view and we do have java so we have various options available we will see that as well and then these are three lines are the header directory directives that means above this we can declare uh, data view variables we can create data view functions we can import data view functions as well which are not available by default here and then below that uh, below these three lines we can put or we can uh, do the logic processing what output we want it to so suppose that we wanted to get the output as a payload here and now you will see here we are able to see whatever the dummy data we have given for this variable accounts that we associated with input payload we are able to see into the json format now let's say that uh, we wanted to see into the java format if we if you say java it will also give us the array of records but it will tell us what type of input is that for a particular field or particular node you see for name it is saying that it is as a string and it is also telling in which package uh, that a string is there so inside java.lang there is a class a string that is uh, of type for the name here again for the rating we are getting same for the description as well so this will give you the complete details if you wanted to see what type of input you are getting from the input and then you wanted to convert then you can use this java if you wanted to use some other you can just hit control space and you will see oh, sorry now you can see what all output we do have we have csv data view flat files json octa schemes there are multiple output streams that we can work with so if you wanted to select like data view we have application by dw and you will see that everything we are getting here whatever uh, we are sending from the input now if you wanted to convert as this is a json form and that is very easy we just need to provide here application by json and then put the payload because both input and output systems are accepting the same language uh, they have no problem that you just need to provide a payload that system is going to accept saying that uh, that's okay i'm able to read this whatever you are sending now i'm going to do the processing i will take care of everything now what if you wanted to send the output or our system is accepting as an xml so as soon as we selected application by xml you can see here we are getting uh, some information messages that is saying that we have two issues that we found if you click on that you will see a new pop up here and you will also see what error is there so why we are able to get why it's not converting because xml always accepts there should uh, there must be a let me quickly open one file here for you so now you can see here xml always has a top element we have got order and inside order we have everything and if you talk about our json file here we don't have any top element which says that what kind of information that xml file is going to accept so again if you say that as these are the account records if you say we have got accounts and what is the information for that account okay so here i do have uh, that's why because uh, I do have a data view file that I'm going to use here. I'll quickly show you just by copying paste. We have got this file here. 
let's quickly remove these things and i will quickly say reload here and let's quickly see what our what issue we are getting now okay why we are getting this error i'll, uh, I'll quickly tell you we have got accounts which is a top element but inside that we also need to uh, tell the individual records here so if you say here now we have got accounts which will be a top, uh, top element for you like this we have got uh, uh, order and uh, under that order we have which product we are ordering here what is the amount for that product what are the payment method who was the buyer every information is there inside a note here that's what we are getting the error so if you uh, this requires uh, some knowledge about XML as well so that's what now we have got the top node as accounts that is what here we are able to see if we wanted to see into the two separate way we have uh, this you can click on this link it will only show you what output you are writing here and what is the actual output for that uh, data view language here so we did here we wanted we are saying that we have got array of accounts and then for every single record we are saying that we have got account record now if you see here we have got first account and then we have got uh, another account so what it is doing is it is automatically iterating with the for and then putting all the data uh, putting a single data for our uh, that is account here so there might be some inform uh, there might be some requirement or uh, even after converting say that you are saying that uh, you have you need to put some information saying uh, name what the product name is instead of the model here suppose that we are saying milsoft connect Oops. So sometimes we might wanted to send some parameters as an attribute of an element here. So how we can do this? So for this, what we need to do is uh, we need to use an for loop here. And how we can use a for loop? Then we do have a map element. So how we will do that here is for that I do have a code here. I'll quickly copy and paste. So there is a function here. That's what we are getting. So this is uh, we don't need the function. If you see now, we have got. Uh, here so let's quickly see the output into windows now you can see the output again is there we have a map element this element works in different parameters like uh, you might want it to provide some parameters here like it can accept records and then you can see here index it will also work if you got records and index here you wanted to see the index you can say here we have got index as an index here and then for the records uh, instead of dollar you can see record dot uh, name and record dot phone and then here it is also refer records now you can see here just to add the attributes we have got an annotation that is at the rate and then provide here the name of attribute your what attribute you wanted to see here suppose that instead of uh, name I, i'm going to say acc name so it will change here into the main tag that is account itself where we are going to change as account name and whatever the name of our record is and we will see it has been changed for all the records and for the index even you will see what is the index it will start from zero and it, it will end to, uh, till nine because we have 10 accounts here so this is how you can uh, use map elements like it map will always accept the first parameter as a record and second parameter as an index if you change the uh, values like saying that it has an index here and it has a record you might uh, be getting some error or you might be getting some other result here as you can see so we we just need to make sure that or we need to keep in mind that the first parameter that we will be passing inside the map uh, map function that will always be the record and second will be the index now you might be no, uh, you might notice that we are using a parenthesis here and why we are using just to give it uh, uh, just to make sure that we are following the external things that is uh, every node will must have a parent element that's what we are doing here so this is how you can convert from your uh, json to xml and then your third system which uh, whatever the system accepting as an xml form uh, form you can put some other parameters like suppose that you have even some other salesforce environment uh, you wanted to do some create you can put your element here and then you can perform the logic now let's talk about uh, how we can create variables into our data view so we can also create the variables we can also get the functions inside data view as well so what is the need of uh, creating the functions or the variables suppose that uh, we wanted to send some static value 
whenever uh, there is some data that is coming from uh, as an input and for the output we have some static value that we wanted to send based on some conditions how we can do that so for creating variable we have a very simple process that it follow like uh, we can say that uh, javascript as well then we have my variable and for my variable we just need to put some value like say that uh, first where and how we can access this let's copy this and suppose that here we have uh, variable colon and then a name of our variable what is now we have got here so where uh, why we are getting the error because this is a, a predefined keyword that is reserved we cannot use that so if you see here into the xml now we will be getting one extra node that is saying that my variable and where we are getting the value of whatever we have defined here now to define the functions uh, we have two way so I'll quickly copy that from uh, copy the complete code from here so that we don't get any error. So to to define, define the functions, we do have two things. One is like we can quickly define uh, using a way here. We, we can use variable and then the name of our function. And then we can provide, uh, we can use uh, two parentheses. So this parentheses might accept some parameters or uh, this might accept one, two or three parameters. And then what we are doing is here we are just uh, we have got two upper this is a method what, uh, which accepting one parameter which is saying that a string whatever the string we are getting and then we are using f else here we are saying that if the value for this string is hot then we are going to say that too hot and else we are going to say that too cold or if you wanted to put other parameters we can uh, uh, sorry we can uh, put our or uh, we can also return these things so there is no need of writing return statement or any other that we used to do in apex java or javascript and then we have other way and that is using fun keyword so what we need to do is again instead of variable we just need to use fun and then name of our parameter uh, sorry name of our function and then it can accept uh, same like it can accept uh, one or more parameters if we are sending some parameter we need to define what is the type of that parameter either it is a string it has uh, some integer number variable date type what is the type of our parameter that uh, particular function is accepting and then again we are just uh, when the fretting is hot we are just sending uh, some random parameters or we can say here so let's quickly capitalize this so if rating is hot we are sending as a uh, everything in caps else we are sending cold uh, everything in caps now how to use these functions inside our variables uh, sorry inside our data view logic after header directory so now you can see that here we are already using those variables we just need to call same as uh, we have to put the function name and then what variable we are sending here suppose that we are sending the ratings of account records as well here so we can send for the two upper as a rating and for capitalize as well as we can send the rating here so we are again getting some error that is uh, okay it is saying that if uh, we are calling a function which has a null value because we do have a null value for some records that's why we are getting the issues here and we are also getting the warnings as well so for that if we have some default if you wanted to send some default values suppose that we have null value in rating parameter rating input how we can send some default value so we have a parameter called default and then inside you can send here so let's say that i'm going to send default as a hot here now if you say here i'm going to say function as capital here then i'm going to say function as upper just to make sure that we are getting the output now you can see here we are getting whatever the output we are sending for the function upper that is rating whatever the rating we have got for this account is uh, that means this account rating is null so it will be sending too cold that's what we are getting here too cold and then again for the function capital we will be set, uh, getting cold here so this is how you can create uh, functions again the need of function is whenever we have uh, something that we wanted to use repetitively inside our data view then we can create a functions and then we can use that function instead of writing the same code again again like we can also put the same logic uh, here next to the attributes or element name as well but to avoid the repetition of the code we always uh, define the functions and then use those
So this is how you we can use the transform masses and then we can transform the data from one system to another system based on what input they are accepting. Now what we have is now let's quickly talk how we can import Salesforce, uh, how we can import into Salesforce system. So suppose that we have contact JSON or CSV file. We wanted to insert those data into the contact record, contact object. We can insert how we can do that. Again, we have to, we need to create some flow. And how we will be creating a flow, that means uh, we need to create a connection with Salesforce that we already have. This time it will be a create instead of query. So how we can do that, let's quickly see. So for that, uh, let's uh, use this transformation as well, or we will be deleting this. Go to the favorites, drag and drop listener here, and this time we will say con contacts accounts because we have accounts data instead of contacts. I will name it as again post accounts. Even we are naming as a post accounts. But what we will be doing, we will be using a method as a get because uh, yes, we will be using as a post here as well because we have a file. So go to the advanced section and restrict this URL to be used for only post method. And now we are good for listener here. For the process, what we need to do is we need to quickly find out Salesforce create, drag and drop. Now you can see we have got a method here, so we need to say post accounts here and we have this configuration that we created earlier what are the records that we are getting the records means the output after creating uh, the system uh, creating the records into the system and then what object we wanted to here if you see here into the drop down we can see all available objects that are available for our salesforce environment so we need to select accounts here as soon as you will select account you will see your metadata is getting refreshed. That means you will be seeing the updated output. Now we have got actual, we have expected, and into the output we will see if there is any errors. ID of the record is if it has been created and then either it has been successfully created or not. So now we have got this simple flow, but if we talk, either it is work or not, it will not work because uh, even into our listener, we have not defined what kind of data um, we are going to get our user is going to send us so go to the metadata tab and then define that we are going to get the array of accounts select that now we have got we have defined what kind of inputs we are going to get that is array of json then we need to transform how we need to transform with the help of transform messages so we just need to drag and drop transform in between listener and post uh, post account so now you can see here as this is account what uh, what input this account is going to accept and what output this uh, listener element is going to give us if we click on this transform message everything we will see here we have what input we are getting and what is the output that uh, system is going to get so how we are going to do here so let's quickly do a json here we are accepting system, uh, json and now if uh, we have here you can see we have got uh, each and every element of uh, each and every field of our account object we need to map account with the account uh, name with the name so let's quickly search here name so we are going to map with name so as soon as you will do a drag drag and drop here it will write a code for you and then we have got phone let's quickly map a phone here as well and then do the same for description and rating as well so we have uh, Rating here. So we, you don't need no need to write the code. Sometimes you need to write the code. Uh, how and when you need to write the code, uh, we will also discuss that scenario quickly. Now you can see here we have mapped all of our fields, and if we click on this erase button, we will see that we have mapped. And if you scroll down, you will see what all fields has been mapped, and then it will give you the complete fields of your account object and you can map very quickly now what uh, what scenario like we have got everything here and for the string here you can say for the name it is uh, phone uh, it is simple because we have value but for the string it is saying that what kind of output we are going to uh, what input we are getting from the system from our http listener so you might have seen that there are two values which are null phone and industry 
so there might be scenario if we have uh, there might be a business use case where we say that if you are getting phone as a null we have a default phone number that we need to assign for all accounts so what we can do is we can say here default and that we also discussed here so and then what we have phone number here let's say that we have this phone number that we wanted to assign to every account required if phone number is null and same thing for the industry if industry is null what we are uh, what we are going to do is we are going to say if industry is null uh, we have a default industry which is saying that technology so now we have got uh, industry default industry as technology here so if industry is blank then for the default case it is going to use technology and then we have got rating here uh, it is uh, for the rating even uh, we can say here default is uh, if there is nothing we can say form this is also these are the picklist field industrial rating and these are the two valid values that we can have so now if we save this we can see that we have got this for the output if you wanted to set the output of the user as well how we can set the output again we can use transform message here and go to drag and drop transform message just after the output you will see now you will see the output of this element is the input of transform message and what output we wanted to generate is we wanted to generate the output as json now we have got json we don't have the metadata we can also define the metadata for this but we don't want to define here we can say quickly we have a payload that we wanted to generate or we want to tell the user that this is a payload uh, and then you can either see there is error or success so this is a very simple flow that we have got here now if we quickly save this and see if our application is ready ready to test and often after that we will be testing it now we have got this uh, application is ready just go to the listener find this url because we are going to use this from our postman now we have got this and then we have post method even if we send this we will see that there is no endpoint uh, that is defined for this uh, no method is defined for this endpoint we need to use post and then as soon as we will select post we need to tell the body uh, we need to send the body so what will be the body here it will be json format that is application by json and where we have so if we go to i have this simple request body for this postman we can quickly replace this now we are able to see all for uh, all the 10 account records that we were using for transforming so now let's quickly verify what we have inside our salesforce record sorry salesforce account so if we go to accounts here and click on go next to new this week list view just to see what we have so you can see that we don't have any records now let's get back to postman send this and we'll see what will be the output either we are getting some errors so here you can see the status code is 200 and we have got uh, success as a true this is account record id and there is no error and this is for each and every account record that we have sent via post method so now if we get back to our salesforce record and if we'll see here refresh this you can see that we have got 10 records that we create just created and you can see here for the ratings if rating is null uh, blank uh, we are setting the warm from uh, from our uh, uh, data view that's why it, uh, it is getting warm here and then for the sum of uh, there is only one account which has technology for week eight, uh, week eight trigger demo so let's quickly check whether it has industry or not hey amit if we still want a uh, null value in, in in the rating then what would we do uh, you just need to uh, make sure that uh, in the transform message we set a default value right you just need to remove this that's it if you have uh, you're setting this default you can remove this uh, and then you just need to tell what kind of input you are getting here either it is a type of a string null or what it is so what then whatever the null val uh, value we are getting from the in uh, as an input uh, that that value will be sent to the source uh, target system that is our salesforce so there then you no need to do anything so this is uh, how quickly we can do let's quickly edit this just to show what phone we have got for this uh, these all accounts 
so now you can see that we have got uh, these phone numbers and for this account only we have got the phone number that we provided so this is how you can import accounts to salesforce you can import any data to salesforce and then in the last uh, what we have is we have some data view core functions so what are these core functions these core functions are very useful whenever we are writing data view uh, whenever we are uh, to show uh, something like that it currently you shown something uh, to the salesforce if uh, the vice versa from salesforce to the third party are you going to show that demo as well uh, we don't have uh, as of now we don't have any third party ready for us uh, which we can use for the demo but as you can see here uh, in our uh, demo as well we saw how you can query contacts now as you have got your contacts here what you can quickly do is uh, if you have some other system like uh, suppose that you have a database here you wanted to do some bulk insert or you wanted to do the insert here you can just do the insert operation after this uh, transform message and then into the database uh, as we don't have any setup and that's why we are not able to show you here but you can select what database you wanted to select either it is my sql server or sql uh, sql connection and then you can do here you can insert all those things we'll try to get some connection here and then might be in the next session we can uh, uh, do this first and then we can uh, continue with our agenda that what we have please please thank you so we are talking about data view core functions so these are the core functions which are very useful uh, there might there are multiple functions as well but uh, in the core functions what we can do is uh, like uh, we have some order by suppose that uh, we are getting output here into the transform message and then we are we wanted to do some order by with the help of some fields we might have some number type of fields like phone number we have some uh, other uh, whatever any number fields we have we wanted to do the ordering either in ascending or descending function uh, descending order we have order by here and then we have distinct by that means uh, sometimes if you have duplicate rows that we are getting we can use those functions or if you wanted to concatenate two string which is most uh, common things and then we need to use double plus instead of a single plus we have double plus and then if you wanted to remove a specific value from an input then we have double minus so these are the data view core functions that we can uh, you can try it out and how you can find those you just need to find uh, go to the google here and type here uh, data view core functions and then the first or uh, second link that you will see this is uh, official mulesoft and you can try using and if you have any questions uh, we are always here to help you and uh, with this uh, i will open the bridge for the question and answer and over to you sombir 